Hi everyone, welcome back to Uniform Circular Motion. Today we're going to be talking about vertical motion, which is a slightly more difficult than the horizontal motion we did last time. Alright, so let's look at our first example problem. A bucket has a mass of 1.2 kilograms. It's attached to a string that is 0 0.7 meters long. It is swung in a vertical cir cir uh, cir circle counterclockwise. <laughs> Draw a free body diagram of the bucket when the bucket is at the bottom of the circle and when it is at the top of the circle. Okay. So if we were to draw a free body diagram down here, we and the bucket's down here as well, what we'd have is we'd have a force of gravity going down, and then we'd have a force of tension going up. If the bucket was at the top over here, and this is the string, what we'd have is we'd have a force of gravity going down, and a force of tension going down as well. Okay. So let's look at these other problems. If the bucket is swinging with a velocity of 5 meters per second, what is the force of tension at the top of the loop and at the bottom of the loop? Okay, so this is pretty interesting because for even though it might be going with a constant velocity of 5 meters per second, there's still an acceleration because it's moving in a circle, meaning it's constantly changing direction. Knowing that, let's figure that out. First, we're going to do the top. Okay, so at the top, we're going to look at all the forces. So it's going to be sum of all forces in the y equals mass times acceleration in the y. And on the chapter of uniform circular motion, what I like to do is I like to label all the forces that are going towards the circle a positive, And any force that's going away from the circle, I like to make negative. So... We have force of tension and force of gravity going towards the circle, so we're going to label both of those positive. And this is going to be equal to the mass times acceleration. And even though it has a constant velocity of 5 meters per second, what we should know is that the, there's going to be acceleration, and that's going to be centripetal acceleration. So let's figure some of these things out. We're looking for what the force of tension is. Force of gravity is going to be 12. The mass is 1.2. And acceleration with centripetal is going to be v squared, which is 5 squared, divided by r. And r is going to be the length of the sh uh, string, 0 0.7. Knowing that, let's do a little bit of math, and let's figure out what force of tension is equal to. All right, 5 squared times 1.2 divided by 0.7 minus 12, and we get 30.86 newtons. Okay, 30.86 newtons. Now let's look for what the tension is going to be at the bottom. Okay. So same thing. Sum of all forces in the y equals mass times acceleration in the y. Force of tension is going towards the circle, so we're calling that positive. But force of gravity is going away from the circle, as we can see down here. So we're going to call that negative, minus force of gravity. We're calling negative not because it's going down, but it's going away from the circle. Mass times acceleration is centripetal. Force of tension, that's what we're looking for. Force of gravity minus 12, which is equal to the mass, 1.2, velocity squared, 5 squared, divided by r, 0.7. Let's do a little bit of math and figure this out. So similar thing, but it's a little bit different. 1.2 times 5 squared, divided by 0.7 plus 12, and we get 54.86 newtons. Okay. So that's how you do uh, part B. Let's look at part C. So part C is a bit more complicated. It says, what is the minimum speed that the bucket must be swing so that the bucket does not come crashing down at the top of its loop? So this is a little bit more confusing. So while this is moving, what's going to happen is we want to know what's going to be the minimum speed this bucket can be spinning so that it barely makes it over. So what we should know is when it's spinning very, very, very fast, there's going to be a lot of force of tension. But as it's not spinning as much, the force of tension is going to decrease and decrease. So what we should know is the minimum speed that the bucket must swing so that the bucket does not come crashing down, that the force of tension is essentially going to be zero. So it's swung so lightly that there's barely any tension at the very top making the force of tension essentially zero. So there's only one force, the force of gravity going straight down. Knowing that, let's try to find the minimum speed. So sum of all force in the y equals mass times acceleration centripetal. 
only force in the Y is force of gravity because there's barely any tension because it's going by so lightly <clears throat> that it's about to like fall almost. It's equal to the mass times velocity squared over R. Force of gravity is 12, mass is 1.2, velocity that's what we're looking for. The radius is 0.7. Velocity is, let's see, 12 times 0.7 divided by 1.2 square root of that, and we get 2.65 meters per second. So we should know that if the bucket was swinging slower than this, what would happen is the bucket would fall down. So it would fall down like that. And if the bucket was going fast in this, it'd go around in a circle, but there'd just be more tension. Tension wouldn't be zero. Okay. All right, moving on. A car with a mass of 720 kilogram goes over a hill at 12 meters per second. If the top of the hill has a radius of 70 meters, draw a free body diagram, uh, uh, draw a free body diagram, what is the force of the normal force, and so on. So when you go on hills and stuff like that, I know a lot of times you don't think about like, oh, there's a radius. But anything that has a curve has a certain amount of radius, okay? So it might not be a full circle, but there still doesn't mean that there's a a, curvat a radius of the curvature. So a free body diagram uh, at the top, right? We're going to have force of gravity going down and force normal going up. Okay, so part B says, what is the normal force? So what we should know is if you've ever gone up a hill really quickly, it's almost like you feel like you're almost floating because you're like coming, coming off. Uh, you're coming off the ground a little bit. I'm not sure if you've ever felt that way. So there won't be as much contact with the ground. So let's figure out what this normal force is. We're going to look at all the forces. Sum of all force in the Y equals mass times acceleration centripetal. We have normal force, which is pointed outside the circle. Remember, uh, positive is whatever point inside the circle, but outside the circle we're calling negative. So this is the circle. And now we're going to call that negative force normal plus the force of gravity, which is going to be positive because it's pointed towards the circle, is equal to the mass, 720, uh, velocity squared, which is 12 squared, divided by r, the radius. Now let's figure out what the normal force is. 12 squared times 720 divided by 70 minus 7200, and we get 5,719 newtons. Okay? And you see there's not as much contact because we're going up a hill. And we're, as we go up so fast, we might kind of lose contact with the ground a little bit or not as much contact. Part C now says, calculate the maximum speed that the car can have without losing contact with the road at the top. So we want to know how fast can we go up this hill without flying off of it. Okay, So what we're going to be doing is sum of all force in the Y equals mass times acceleration centripetal. However, we're going to be going so fast that there's barely going to be any contact with the ground. So there's barely any contact that the normal force is essentially zero because we're losing contact with the road. So that means we only have the force of gravity because there's barely going to be any contact with the road. So we're just going to have force of gravity is equal to mv squared over r. Force of gravity being 7200, mass being 720, v that's what we're looking for. R70, and let's figure out what V is. 7200 times 70 divided by 720, and the square root of that, and we get 26.46 meters per second. Okay? Go any faster than this, and this thing will be flying off the hill. Okay, it'll be just flying really fast, and it'll be like a projectile motion problem. Slower than this, and it'll round the hill just fine, but there will be a normal force now because there, it has contact with the ground. Okay, moving on. While driving along a country lane with a, a constant speed of 17 meters per second, you encounter a dip in the road. The dip can be approximated as a circular arc with a radius of 65 meters. Okay, let me just draw that. 65 meters. What is the normal force exerted by a car seat on an 80 kilogram passenger when the car is at the bottom of the hill? So we have the force of gravity. Uh, <clears throat> from the passenger, which is gonna be 800 Newton. And then we're looking for what the normal force is. So let's figure this out. Sum of all forces in the Y equals mass times acceleration centripetal. We have normal force, which is pointed towards the circle, so we're calling that positive. 
force of gravity, which is pointed away from the circle, so we're calling that negative, is equal to mv squared over r. Force normal, that's what we're looking for. Force of gravity is 800, is equal to the mass, uh, which is 80, v squared, which is 17 squared, divided by r65. And you should kind of remember this. Whenever, if you've ever been going down a hill, you get that feeling in your stomach and you feel kind of heavy. I'm not sure if you've ever felt that. You might have also felt that on the swings. But same kind of thing here. You're going to feel kind of heavy and your normal force is going to be more than just the force of gravity. So I did the calculations and you guys should have a normal force around 1155.7. If you've ever been on roller coasters, you feel this a lot. Okay. All right, let's look at this one, honors problem. A carnival clown rides a motorcycle down a ramp and around a vertical loop. The loop has a radius of 18 meters. Okay, so this is 18 meters. Um, what is the slowest speed the rider can have at the top of the loop to avoid falling? So we wanna know what's the slowest that this clown can go without falling off. We don't want him to fall off at the top, so we wanna know what the slowest uh, this clown can go. So. What we should know is the slowest he's going to go is if he goes really fast, there's going to be a lot of normal force. But when we go so slow, there's going to be barely any normal force. It's almost like coming off the ground. The normal force is essentially just going to be like zero. So there's only going to be one force at the very top, the force of gravity. So let's figure that out. Sum of all force in the y equals mass times acceleration centripetal. There's only force of gravity. It's called mv squared over r. So mg10 is equal to mv squared, which we're looking for, over r18. Ms cancel out, and we can find what v is. So let's do this. Uh, 180 square root of 180. And we get 13.42 meters per second. Yeah. Part B the motorcycle had a mass of 70 kilograms and was going 15 meters per second, so faster than 13.42 meters per second. What will be the normal force he experienced? So we know there is a normal force going downwards because now he's going faster than the minimum. So let's figure out what that normal force is. Sum of all forces in the Y equals mass times acceleration centripetal. They're both pointed towards the circle, so they're both positive. And let's figure this out. Force normal, that's what we're looking for. Force of gravity, which is 70 times 10, 700. Mass 70, V squared, uh, 15 squared, divided by R18. And the normal force is, let's see, 15 squared times 70, divided by 18, minus 700. And we can see there is a normal force of 175 Newton. Okay. Uh, at the top and bottom. Oop, I didn't find the bottom. Sorry. So that was the that was at the top, right? But now let's figure out the bottom. The bottom here, so same kind of thing, except down here the force normal is going up and force of gravity is pointed downwards. So let's figure that out. Sum of all forces in the Y equals mass times acceleration centripetal. We have force normal pointed toward a circle, positive, but force of gravity pointed away, so it's negative mv squared over r. Force normal, that's what we're looking for. Force of gravity, 770 v squared, 15 squared, divided by r. And you're going to notice that the force normal is going to be a lot more at the bottom. And if you've ever been on a roller coaster, you feel a lot more g-force on the bottom. And this, this is proving why that is. Okay? If you put it into your calculus, you get around 1575 newtons. So way more g-force, way more force as you go towards the bottom. And you'll feel that if you've ever been on a roller coaster. After a loop-de-loop, -loop, the bottom is the uh, hardest on your stomach. Okay, last one here. A two kilogram object is tied to one end of a string. It moves in a circle with a constant speed of five meters per second on a horizontal frictionless table, making a radius of 1.5 meters. Okay. 1.5 meters. The second end of the string is connected to a big mass M, and goes through a small hole in the table. Draw a free body diagram on both masses. Okay, so we have mg, and then I'm gonna call this the force of tension, okay? This is gonna be force of tension, and this is gonna be mg, or, or fg, I should say, and then ft. 
Okay, that's the free body diagram. B, what is the value of m? So we should know mg, since it's just hovering here, is going to be equal to the force of tension. So we should know this force of tension is equal to capital mg. And we should know that this force of tension is what's allowing this to go in a circle, meaning this force of tension is equal to the force centripetal. So we know force of tension is equal to capital mg. And we know force centripetal is equal to this m, v squared over r. Okay, so this is spinning in a circle. What's allowing to go in a circle is this force of tension. And then that force of tension is counterbalancing with this force of gravity here. So these two are equal to each other, but this force of tension is also equal to mv squared over r. So let's figure this out. m we don't know. Gravity, 10. Little mass, they give us 2 kilograms. Velocity, they also give us 5 meters per second. And the radius, they said, makes a radius 1.5 meters. Knowing that, let's see if we could cap find capital M. 5 squared times 2 divided by 1.5 divided by 10. And we get 3.33 kilograms. Okay. Hope that all made sense. Next time, we'll be learning about conical pendulums. So I'll see you for that one. Thanks for watching, everyone.